Now that we've captured the application, we've tested the application, we're going to go ahead and compile it. It's going to take all of the raw information that was in the WinZip folder and create a single file. The single XPF package will be uploaded to the streaming server and then activated and made available to users. On the streaming server, I'm going to open the streaming console. Under Packages, I'm going to upload the new package that we just created. I'm going to choose the winzip.xpf file. I'm now going to hit refresh so it shows up in the list. The options here are online only, offline enabled, and offline enabled if laptop. Online only means that the user will need to have access to the streaming server in order to stream the application or use the application. Offline enabled allows the user to access the application while it's not connected to the network. Offline enabled if laptop allows the agent to see if the machine is actually a laptop and if so it will allow offline access. Precache is how much of the application you want to be streamed down to the desktop. None provides absolutely no precaching. Icon only caches just the icon for the application. Once the user initiates the application launch, the application will be then streamed down to their desktop. Package allows the entire package to be pre-cached on the user machine. In this demo, I'm just going to choose Icon. Under Settings, I can choose what operating systems this will be available to run on. Since I captured this in Windows 7, it's best practice to only allow this to stream to Windows 7. I can also set this application to expire, such as a trial period. A zero-day trial period would allow the user to run the application only once before expiring. You can also set it to any number of days, or on a specific date. Now that I've uploaded the server, provided some settings, I'm going to now provision it and make it available to a user. For this demo, I'm going to choose Homer. Homer already has Internet Explorer 8 and version 6 available to him. I'm also going to allow him to access WinZip. Now that I've uploaded the application, made it available to users, I'm also going to modify the licensing. I'm going to say that there are only two licenses available, and only two are allowed to run concurrently. You can also input information for accounting purposes, such as who the buyer was, the quantity of the licenses, how much you paid for it, and when. The license summary has a real-time overview of the licenses in use. Right now we can see that there is a maximum available of two, with zero being consumed. I'm now going to log into a user machine as Homer. Since I set the application to precast the icon, it will show up on the desktop.
If I hit refresh, again, you'll see that zero licenses are consumed. Now, once I launch WinZip, In real time, the streaming server now shows that one license is consumed. We can also run reports against application provisioning and licensing. If an application were to become corrupt, then end user can simply reset said application by right clicking on it and choosing reset. This provides a clean, fresh install. I'm now going to remove WinZip and change its settings on the streaming server. I'm going to set the application to be streamed only with caching of the icon. Now when I launch the application, only the necessary bits required to run the application will be streamed down to my workstation. As you can see, WinZip is fully functional and only 7% of it exists on my machine. I'm now going to provision Office to Homer. I'm going to choose Office 2010. Now we're going to go back over to Homer's machine and force an update of the applications. We now see Microsoft Office available for Homer. What I'd like to demonstrate here is how much of Office will actually be installed on this machine. I'm going to launch Word and we'll see that the application will begin streaming itself down. We can see that 2% of Office has been streamed down to this machine, however, Office is fully functional. As I use more features of Office, additional bits of it will be streamed down to my machine. Right now, only 3% of Office has been streamed down to this machine. As you can see, I have multiple Office applications running at the same time, yet only 3% of Office is actually on this machine. This provides bandwidth reduction as well as disk space reduction. If Office were to become corrupt, I could simply reset the application, and those bits would be restreamed down.